Amen. Can y'all honor God before you sit back down? Let's give God all the glory. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in spirit and truth tonight. Um, let's thank God for Zion. All the other things fade away. Amen. I enjoyed the worship tonight. Enjoying being back together. Hallelujah. We assemble ourselves to eat of the word of the Lord. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. In other words, this is life tonight. Amen. Grab your Bibles. So we are going to, we're flipping it around. And um, CCM, thank God for our student leadership. They have a very, very, very powerful post session, 2 Peter chapter 3. Um, I'm just going to be up here just for a moment to establish something. And then you're going to take over. And um, can, I, can I let it out the bag? Because they, they can look forward to it. Everybody likes open mic. So y'all going to have to sing tonight? Okay, all right. I don't, honestly, I really don't know. I just know. I know they said open mic. So right now it's closed mic. It's just my mic. In a minute, it's going to be open mic. 2 Peter chapter 3. Um, now I have the King James Version here. Uh, what, what you got right there, Richards? New Living? Y'all want to read it? Is it on the screen? Almost. So we've been talking about growing in grace. And tonight we're going to continue that effort to make sure that after all the singing and all the amens, and all the stuff that we do because we are part of a culture of ministry that we leave here a little bit more grown than we did before we came. Amen. Now, your hair is not going to grow tonight. Sorry, brothers, your height's not going you're not going to leave here taller. Sisters, your lips are not going to get any bigger because you came to Bible study. And everything else that you would love for God to grow physically, that's not about to happen. Look at somebody and say, this is a spiritual growth. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse... Oh, screen's not working. Amen. Um... NLT, I, I, I can't get on the online here, so um, you got it. This is NLT? Yes. All right, I love it. You ready? It says, this is my second letter to you, dear friends. Who's talking? And who is Peter? Somebody said a disciple. Somebody else said the apostle. Which one is it? I hear a whole lot of arguments. Which one is it, church? Some of you all need to learn how to be steadfast. It's both. It's both. You can't say that I'm not a minister because I'm a pastor now. Come on now. 
Which one came first? What came before that? Friend. What is very interesting about how he leans into this teaching to get people to not be so stupid. And remember, that's the number one. That's the number one enemy. It's not the devil. It's what? Tell your neighbor, your stupidity is what will kill you before your demons will. He said, this is my second letter to you. All right. But I'm coming to you not as a disciple or as an apostle, but I'm coming to you as a friend at this point. Truthfully, most of our friends will not tell us the truth. Most of our friends will agree with our truth, but they won't tell us the truth. And you, you, you'll get there, you're going to grow to where you will realize Watch this, how stupid some of our friendships really are. You'll get there. Sometimes some of you all may have looked back on some of your situationships that you lie and say they were friendships first. But has anybody ever looked back on that stuff and realized, man, that was some dumb stuff? It, it, it's just like, I don't even realize, have anybody ever been ashamed of how you used to think? I don't even realize, like, what was I thinking? Like, I know better. I was raised better. I didn't even feel right, but I just... This is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, so now I'm doubling down. I'm here to tell you what I'm about to tell you. In both of them, what does he say? Mm. Stop right there. That's what I want to talk about for 10 minutes. Wholesome thinking. Please be seated. I made this statement a couple of weeks ago. Did we have that video? I thought we was going to do a little. Vi okay, I made this statement a couple of weeks ago. So, sound ready? Do we have audio? I made the statement a couple of weeks ago that you can't really go on campus talking about wholesome thinking because nobody's going to get excited about that kind of message. But I realize what's going to get us to heaven is not the things that's going to excite us. It's the things that's going to stimulate us. Exciting church is not always salvific. It's entertaining. And it's fun to be entertaining and to be entertained. But if we don't ever drill down into what matters to God the most, we can put on all the skinny jeans and start up all the smoke machines that we want. But we're still not going to be saved. And that's one of the things that is a struggle right now between, um, you know, how to approach ministry. Do we do it like the old way? Or do we do it the new way? I tend to lean on neither one. I think we should do it God's way. And I don't even want to put like, make it seem like, you know, like, like it's a myriad, like old way over here, New way over here, God's way right here. I don't even feel comfortable with that. You want to know why? Because remember now, you have to work on your perspective. And you have to work on your perception. If you work on your perspective and your perception, you will start growing immediately. All right? Your perspective is what? Your perception is how you... 
So look at this. Old way, new way, God's way. I think that's disrespectful. I think it should be like this. Old way, new way, God's way. What did I just define for you in your perception? Okay, God is outside. Facts. Just define that. What else? Huh? Come on, brother. Confusing? If he just said a little louder, I'll get it. That's what I said, confusing. Okay, all right. That's what I thought he said. But you just kept talking to me like I thought I would. Um, not so much. There's one more perspective I wanted you to see. We got that. He's all the way over there. He's in his own lane. Not what? Can't comprehend what you you're getting close. She said he's not in alignment. I want you to see this too. God's way is not a mixture. God's way is not the medium. <laughs> he's not the compromise. And that's why even while like we're compromising sometimes when we do things all that way old school, and then we're compromising when we do things all this way and we think that, well, the medium is the best way. A little this, a little that, and bam, we got the perfect mixture. You don't make, bake a cake using a little bit of eggs. If I'm going to use four eggs, I'm going to use four uh, cups of flour. You don't say, let's just equal it out and mix it. No, 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 no. The proportions is still off. Come on, somebody. God has to be independent of what we think. Because what we think is what we think. And in order for us to be able to, 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 to comprehend the, how shall I say it, the uh, equation of how God wants us to move, we got to take ourselves out of. Huh? How, how, how much damage has the church done to us because man has misguided God's people? If you look all the way through the Old Testament, you will be reading countless scriptures where man has corrupted mankind. God sent a prophet and tell you, this is the way. We'll, we'll walk that way until we don't. And that's usually when we get tired. And guess what tired looks like in the Old Testament? It ain't in your knees. It's not in their backs. You did not leave the church because you were tired in your body. Oh, my God. Huh? It's a weariness that's not physical. It's a weariness that's mental. Oh, my God, you remember when you didn't have a ride, but you still got where you was going. It didn't matter how tired you were because you were determined. Yeah. What the enemy wants to do is to, to, to take away our determination. If he can stop your press, now he has his way into your mind. I'm just, I'm just tired. You're up all night. I thought you was tired. Well, I ain't sleepy. Hmm? I'm just tired. You got to understand depression. In depression is two words. I wish I had a whiteboard. D-E-P-R-E-S-S-I-O-N. Press on. He is trying to D 
your press on. Come on, y'all, help me now. Help me now. That's the only reason why people are depressed is because they are tired of going forth. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now we can actually start reversing what depressing means. Depression means for me. Because on the other side of your press is your victory. And, the, and, and I always tell people this. The dark, if you know the answer because you've been under me longer than six months, don't say nothing. It's not fair for you to just call out all the answers like you knew them before you were taught. You know, it's unfortunate that we have all the classes in one Bible study. So some of you all in here are seniors and some of you all in here are freshmen. Okay, seniors, shut your mouth. Juniors, be quiet. All right? What hour is the darkest night? The, what hour is the darkest time of the night? You, you, look, you look smart. What is it? You said, he said, did he say dawn? Well, not quite. Behind you. I seen you working with it. 3 a.m.? Okay. I did hear midnight over here. I don't know who said it. Church, tell them, what's the darkest hour of the night? Just before dawn. It's not 11 p.m. It's not 12 p.m. It's not 3 a.m. It's not 4 a.m. It's somewhere between 4.30 and 5.30 is when it gets the darkest. What happens at dawn? What does that tell you about your depression? Right when you are feeling the worst, right when it hurts the most, right when you are the loneliest of lonely, I've never felt this bad. You are the closest to your breakthrough. You are almost there. You are just about to come out and you don't feel like it because you have reached the lowest point on this on in this test you have reached the darkest hour of this night but if you press on i want you to do me a favor can you get up don't work with your neighbor get up and just push somebody behind you or around you and say look i don't know what you're going through just press on just just press on tell them tell them just just press press tell them lean into it Lean into it. Can anybody remember their darkest night? Somebody said last night. Did it get any better? Or is everybody in here doing worse than they were this time last year. Does there, anybody remember when you thought you were not going to make it? You was like, this is the big one. I'm not going to recover from this. I'll never meet anybody better than that one. That's the best I could ever have. Oh my God. Don't you listen to them. Don't you li I'm telling you, you better shut Drake down. He don't have victory. He don't got your victory in his lyrics now. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't promise me because if, if it wasn't the best, it ain't the best I will ever have. But some of us have not been exposed to better because every time we get into our midnight, we fold. Oh, 
So what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm working on right now is I'm working to stimulate your thinking. Okay? Because the biggest battle that you and I will fight, I don't care how old you are, I don't care what ethnicity you are, I don't care from what parts you are, I don't care from what gang you are, I don't care how, what, 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 what gender you are, I don't care what orientation you are, this is something that we have in common with the same people in Poland, with the same people in Germany, with the same people in Austria, with the same Aborigines, the same people in India, this is one thing we all have in common, as humans, as fleshly beings, the number one thing that we will fight and contend in our life is our mind. That's where your biggest battle is. My biggest battle is not on the field. My biggest battle is in the field. All right, seniors, juniors, don't say anything. But I taught you this a long time ago. Everybody say enemy. We know what is the enemy? It's your adversary. Okay, another word, we call them haters. Huh? What is the enemy? The ops. Huh? Opposition. Say it again. Say it again. Anybody have a, ever had to fight some enemies? Anybody got some enemies right now? Anybody don't even know where your enemies come from? I don't even know what I did to deserve this. Huh? Say it again. Enemy. Say it again. Enemy. Say it a little slower. Enemy. Say it a little slower. Enemy. Now, not all of them, but my number one. My number one enemy. Some of them are out there. Yeah, they are. But my number one, the enemy is constantly telling me to pay attention to those enemies. When there are always more people that are for you than against you. But if you're fighting, battling insecurity, where's that battle going on? You will ignore all the affirmations and you will focus on all the rejection. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that enemy, he, he's constantly working on our mind because he knows I don't actually have to do anything in the flesh if I can just get it done in the mind. When you start getting attacked in your body, it's because the devil couldn't attack your mind successfully. When you start getting attacked in your money, it's because you, he couldn't get your mind successfully. When he starts messing with your children, it's because he couldn't get your mind. So now he's getting the best thing, the next closest thing that you love. It's a, it, I always tell the people, if you ever want to hurt me, hurt what I love. You can hurt me and I'll recover quicker. But if you hurt what I love, oh my God, y'all ain't saying nothing. And some of you are in love with your money. So he know all they got to do is just attack their finances. Hmm. Some of you are in love with your relationships more than you should be in love with your salvation. So all I got to do is attack the relationship and I can get them to act outside of themselves. Some of you are in love with your careers. So people commit suicide every day because they lose their footing in their career. All I got to do is find out what it is you love and, and if I can attack that, then I can attack you. Oh my God. I can attack you. Remember I told you the, 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 the true story about a young lady who was taking um, an exam uh, to be a doctor and she got the letter in the mail that she failed the exam. Everything was writing on her passing. And she got the, the, the you know, that, that um, what do you call those types of exams? This is not like a semester exam. This is qualifying. No, no, this is that. This is like the bar. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like that, you know, you know, the bar exam, they say the bar is the, 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 um, the hardest exam in the world. That's what they say, the bar exam. I, I'm not talking about the exam you take at the end of your semester. 
I'm talking about the exam that you take to start your career. That's two different exams. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could, you're going to take a, 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 an exam at the end of your third year of law school to capstone your learning. But you're going to leave the school, get your law degree, leave the school. Now you're on your own. Now you got to study for the bar. Y'all get it now? Okay, you got a law degree, but you don't have a law license. And that's why some people, you know, if you understand how this thing works, some people will say, I practice law. You can't practice without a license. You can learn with a degree, but you can't practice without a license. So it was that kind of the exam. I think it was for med school, though, right? Maybe the MCAT, something like that, huh? I don't know. Y'all get it, right? So listen, so, so she took it, did the best she had, put everything she had into it, studied hard, drilled down, shut down, went in and did her best. And she waited and waited and waited. And she eventually got her letter. And the determination was that she failed the test. Major letdown. So she went out and jumped off a bridge to her death. She committed suicide. Only though, days after she committed suicide, they were trying to reach her to let her know they made a mistake on her score. They made a mistake on her score. They sent her the wrong score. She actually passed. But she didn't press on. Oh, come on, somebody. She didn't press on. And most people, glory to God, don't even realize how close they are to their breakthrough. Now, by the time we finish tonight, you're going to realize how close you are to your breakthrough. Can you encourage somebody around you, whether you know them or not, and say you're closer than you think? Okay, now let me teach y'all how to have church. If you believe it, give God praise. Y'all took me back to CCM 2012. Oh, I'm closer than I think. Oh. If you believe it and you know good and well, you don't think you're really that close, but God told you you're closer than you think, then you ought to give God the glory because you ain't did nothing to be that close. But it's the grace of God that got you this far. I don't even deserve to be that close. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. I write you to do what? Stimulate your what? To, to do who? To do what? To help you how? Amen. To get you jump started. Can you play that? Amen. To get you in the place where you understand some things that you don't really understand right now. I got to pull you into a consciousness that you don't already have. Y'all seen this last week. Some people ain't seen it yet. Somebody need Peter to do that today. <laughs> Somebody say work, Peter. I, I, need, I need to stimulate that wholesome. I'm tired of these conflicting thoughts. I'm tired. I know I'm stable, but I'm dealing with some stupid stuff. I'm tired of feeling like that. I know good, good and well that God did not call me to be bipolar or schizophrenic or unstable or an emotional wreck. Why, Peter? I need my mind. Glory to God to be restored. That's right. Somebody say hallelujah. You think about all the messages that media puts in our mind. And it gets addictive, don't it? You can't. You watch one TikTok and it fall over into another one. And if you try to back out of it, it'll give you three more chances. Go over to God because the enemy has a message for our mind. But I rebuke the devourer right now in Jesus' name. I said I rebuke the, the, the agenda. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. God, help me to purify my thoughts again. Glory to God. The reason why I'm dealing with so many of these strongholds is because of what's being delivered to my thinking. But all in the name of Jesus, let the power of God and the blood of the Lamb be applied on my thinking.
Look at Philippians chapter 2 real quick. Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to tell you something. Wholesome. This is the definition for wholesome thinking. You ready? Conducive or suggestive of good health, physical well-being, and physical well-being. So wholesome thinking is healthy thinking. Are my thoughts healthy? Now my thoughts inform my actions. There is nothing that you will do that you don't think about except when the Holy Spirit starts talking. That's the only exception. Everything that you did today, I don't know how long, but you thought about it. Just like you're thinking about quitting right now. Just like, you know, you're thinking about, you know, this is my last semester here, right now. Just like you're thinking about cheating, right now. Just like you're thinking about, you know what I'm saying, making a payment plan, and you got all the money, but you don't want to pay all of it. Huh? Just like you're thinking about actually keeping the pace. Just like you're thinking about, I need to keep working on me. Just like you're thinking about starting back in the gym. Just like you're thinking about eliminating debt. Just like you're thinking about doing what you need to do because you don't want to go backwards. You want to go forward. Everything that you do is going to be informed by what you think. And so if you can ever defeat the, the, the dark thoughts and the unhealthy thinking, you are already winning the battle to your future. The thing is, though, we think about 2% positive and 98% negative. That's not factual. I'm just, you know, just, just. But this is the facts. We battle more negativity. Why do we battle more negativity? Because we hear more negativity. Because we see more negativity. As a matter of fact, we're so used to negativity that it's strange when somebody delivers positivity to us. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's strange when somebody actually puts forth effort to like make friends with us. Because we're so used to people seeing through us or just looking at us <laughs> and not talking to us. It's strange when people, oh my God, I, I'm going to make you, you know, make all the brothers feel weird. It's strange when another man holds a door for you. When that's not a gender gesture. That's just a nice thing to do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'll never forget, man. I was in Walmart one night. It was when Walmart was open 24 hours. Don't we miss 24 hour Walmart? Amen. Mm -mm. God said not so, not so. It was too much negativity going on that past, after hours in Walmart. So I was in Walmart shopping late, late one night. And you know this, this dude, we was on a cereal aisle. This dude, this dude came over to me. He said, hey, what's up, bro? I said, what's up, man? He said, Hey, will you, will you grab that for me? My little heart just about dropped out, my little. I was like, sure, I'll grab that for you. Because I'm thinking he had enough heart to ask me because he was a short guy. And I mean, he just, you know, I mean, he was just like, hey, bro, do you mind? And I was like. Yeah, bro, I'll grab it for you, man. I got you, bro. I got you. You good with me? Hey, we're going to keep this between us. I want everybody in here in order to stimulate your what? I want you to do something that you would normally not do 
as a positive gesture. Now, let's go deeper. Are you ready? Wholesome thinking is not the same thing as positive thinking, though. <laughs> Wholesome thinking is not to be equalized with, with positive thinking. There's a whole lot of positivity that's still not godly. Come on. You got to remember now, don't put Jesus in a box of just kindness. Jesus literally said these words, and I'm going to let you figure out this out in your own Bible study. He literally said, I did not come to be friends. He said, I came with a sword. Oh, my God. And he said, this sword is to divide what? Demons and the church. It would make sense if he said that. But he said, mothers and daughters, fathers and oh my God, what in the world, what kind of savior is this? He's trying to break up our family. First of all, if your family is already broken, Jesus didn't have nothing to do with it. What is he trying to break up? He's trying to break up any bond that will draw you closer to anything other than him. And so that means even my family. Oh, come on, my. Oh, my God. How many of you all know right now? L let me talk. Now let me talk to the juniors and seniors. You know, how many of you all, since you've really been sold out, your family became your spiritual op? Like, they just don't get it. Like, they just... They just like, okay, it's all right that you go to church, but now we got a family reunion this weekend. Let me tell you something. The best family reunion is going to come the year where you're doing the biggest spiritual work. It's never going to come at the convenient time. And the way I know God to test us is to, to, to you know, every time free food comes is when what? The biggest family, this is going to be the family union where we go into Bali and it's all expenses paid. You just, because you're a part of the family, you can go. And that's going to be the year where you then backslid five times and you told God right before you found out that there was going to be a free trip to Bali that you'll let nothing separate you. Oh my God, y'all not saying nothing to me. Y'all not saying nothing to me, but if you, you know, and, 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 you know, that's a hypothetical, but how many of you realize that God tests you in your mind in the times where it's most convenient for you to disobey, where it's most convenient for you to step away, where it's most convenient for you to, you know, it, 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 God actually helps you to make it easy for you to leave and not stay. Because it's that same mentality that women have when they're trying to find out, do we really love them, brothers? Huh? They will make it easy for you to leave just to see, are you going to fight to hold on to me? Until you start fighting to hold on to God, you don't really love God yet. Until you start fighting to hold on to this word, you don't really have a relationship yet. Until you start fighting to hold on to the Holy Spirit, you don't really have a good portion of it yet. Until you start fighting to hold on to your good mind, you don't have the right mind yet. The battle is what? In a... Oh, my Lord. And so what he was saying was, I want to stimulate something because I want you to realize that positive thinking is not enough to get you to heaven. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, the Bible says that Satan is like a, a, a wolf dressed in what? So you can't just look at everything on the surface because it looks pure. If, it, if, if, if you just look at everything from that perspective, then the enemy knows how to grab you. And I keep telling people, sin is sensational. It, all, it looks good. It smells good. It feels good. It tastes good. 
it, it, that's what sin is. If sin did not look good, you would be like, I don't want no sin. If sin didn't taste good, you'd be like, I don't want it. I don't want to eat none of that. If sin did, did feel good, you'd be like, uh, oh, that's the devil. That don't feel right. Uh-uh. You got to understand, what does a sheep look like? Pure, clean, humble, soft. That's what your devil looks like. He is dressed, oh my God. He is dressed. But what you got to do is you got to stop befriending people and accepting opportunities that only seem to be right on the surface. You got to find out what's in the core of a thing. You got to find out what's in the core of a sister, what's in the core of a brother. Are our values? The same. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Glory to God. If we don't have the same values, then one of our kids is going to be Jekyll and the other one of our kids is going to be Hyde. Y'all not saying nothing. Do we even have the same morals? Are we? Do we even think about this thing the same? One of us tithes. The other one of us don't even believe in giving to nothing. Glory to God. But the lottery, you know, it's a casino going up 35 miles from here. And it's getting ready to bust up a lot of homes. Just watch it. Just watch it. Because, you, oh my God, because right now if you want to gamble, you got to drive at least four hours. But they're building a casino in Danville. And they can't get it up fast enough. You remember how they built the Aggie, uh, you know how they built the new student center, right? But they couldn't get it up fast enough so they built an Aggie dome. They're building a temporary dome so people can hurry up and start gambling. While they keep working on the casino. And what you're getting ready to find out is everybody around here who have gambling addictions, you're going to see it now on Front Street. Because what the enemy wants to do is to stimulate anything that's going to cause you to stumble. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so, glory to God, a lot of people lose their footing in their relationships because of how we even look at finances. We value money differently. Oh, my God. Y'all hadn't got there yet because all you care about is attraction. But when you get a little more grown, you're going to care about compatibility. I may be attracted to you, but I'm not compatible with everybody that I'm attracted to. Have anybody ever said, mm, that looked good, but it won't work? It, it just... Anybody ever went shopping like that's cute, but it don't it won't it won't work for me. That that's dope. I really like them shoes, but I put it on and it's not compatible with my foot. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all better stop fooling around with people just because you're attracted to them. Glory to God. You ain't got to do nothing but just go out for a four for four. You ain't going to get out of the car. You can stay and drive through the window and find out if you're really compatible together. Oh, my God. Because if he mess around and start eating fries and don't offer you none, we're not compatible. Y'all not say, ha, glory to God, amen. How the world you didn't offer to pay for my food? We're not compatible. How you get a large and can't offer any? Oh, oh, oh. Glory to God. The Bible says it's the small foxes that destroy the whole vine. It ain't the big ones. It's the small ones. Some of you got friendships, you're not even compatible. And that's why y'all keep falling out. Because one of you all value truth and the other of you all operate in deception. You know what I'm saying? But you know how to have a good fun. And I'm going to tell you something right now. The friend that you have the most fun with is probably the one that you're least compatible with. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, I got some friends, man. Sometimes I just start laughing when I think about all the fun we had. But I know one thing. I but I go back. <laughs> oh, my God. I need some balance. Do you hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. I had so much fun with you, I stopped going to class behind you. I had so much fun with you, I ran up my credit card behind you. I had so much fun with you, I did some stuff I never said I was going to do. And it was fun. And I thank God for grace because we sure had a good time. But I thank God that he graced me. Glory to God. And I got enough sense to understand. It did not stimulate my wholesome thing. Oh, 
my God. I need somebody that's working with my future, not my feelings. I can grow out of my feelings, but I'm supposed to grow into my future. Oh my God, you ought to step up and tell somebody you can grow out of how you feel, but you're supposed to grow into, glory to God, how you live. Ah! I feel like preaching a little bit right now. Now I'm feeling a little church, a little less Baptist and more Pentecostal. Glory to God. I got to get to the point where I understand what's going to work for the future, not just for the here and the now. Positive thinking has strippers praying before they show. Y'all ain't... Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. <laughs> Positive thinking and wholesome thinking is not the same. It's not to be equalized. Hallelujah. It's not to be equalized. But I want you to understand. Now, where did I tell you to go? Second. Philippians 2. Did I tell you where to go? Go to chapter 5. Hmm? Is anybody getting anything? I'm sorry. Verse 5. Philippians 2. My bad. I said chapter. Verse 5. Let's start at verse 5. Philippians 2. Oh, um, let's, let's go KGV, KJV for just one second. Amen. Let's just go right there. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. That's the wholesome thinking right there. That's a whole nother mind. Well, I'm not perfect. Try. Amen. One thing 50 Cent did say that made sense, I'm going to die trying. Huh? Try. Until we, content, until we can work with what we see in the gospel text about how the thought pattern of Jesus. Remember, he did not know sin, but he became sin. Even becoming sin, he can still deliver wholesome thinking to our mind. Don't think that Jesus was so holy that he never felt like a hope. He became sin. What makes Jesus so relatable to all of us is that he had to deal with every emotion that we deal with because he became sin. You can't become sin and be holy at the same time. Oh, y'all not saying nothing. Glory to God. He is holy, but the moment he was made in flesh, he became sin. So he had to deal with all the emotions and all the thoughts and all the accusations that you did in order to become the ransom for your sin. He had to become all of our sin. Y'all not saying nothing to me. He had all the thoughts. He felt all the ways. Glory to God. He dealt with all the things. And just because it's not written all the way through here, that don't mean he did not have to deal with it because he became sin. He did not have a crown on his head. He had hair on his head. Glory to God. He did not have wings on his back. He had skin on his back. Y'all not saying nothing. When he bled, he did not bleed white. He bled red. Y'all not talking back to me. Glory to God. When he got thirsty, he didn't automatically have a reservoir. He got thirsty. He got parched. Glory to God. Everything that you dealt with and are dealing with as a human, that's what Jesus dealt with. But he still was able to hold on to his mind oh my god y'all not saying nothing to me say it but don't lose your mind oh my god don't you dare do it don't you dare do it don't lose your mind don't lose your mind i know sometimes you can feel weird about things i know sometimes you can deal with anxiety i know sometimes you don't understand i know sometimes you're having a hard time processing but one thing you ought to do if you ever feel your mind running away from you you ought to get on your knees glory to god and you ought to ask the lord lord help my mind i know my feelings is hurt glory to god i know my body is hurting glory to god i know my money is is hurting i know my gpa is hurting but if i can just hold on to my mind i can take the class again if i could just hold on to my mind 
I can find another job. If I can just hold on to my mind, I can find somebody else that will love me better. If I could just hold on to my mind, I can find some new friends. If I could just hold on to my mind, glory to God, I can find my way to my better days. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But if I ever lose my mind, when he said don't faint, he wasn't talking about falling back and falling out. He was talking about, glory to God, your mind falling out of place. Somebody ought to open your mouth and say, Lord, stimulate my mind tonight. Glory to God. Lord, stimulate my thinking tonight. God, I need you to speak a word, not to my flesh, not to my feelings, but I need you to speak a word to my mind. If you can help me think my way all the way 2020 through 2023, glory to God, I know I finished this year in a better place than the way I started. Let the mind that was in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you something about that mind. It was focused. He stopped here and he stopped there. But he never stopped until he got to the cross. Even when Peter defended him in the garden of Gethsemane. Peter had the power to deal with his captures. Peter literally took out his knife. And cut the ear of the one who came to arrest Jesus. In other words, Peter was that gangster dude. He was that gang. He Peter was the gangster disciple. Y'all don't know nothing. Them dudes in California, they don't know nothing about that. Glory to God. You don't really know what a gangster disciple is. Glory to God. I don't know if I got any people from Chicago in here, but the Chicago is where the GDs are. We spent some time in the streets. Remember that, Dexter? Was that you? We spent some time in the streets in Chicago with the GDs. We didn't know what we was doing. They gave us bandanas, told us to tie it around. Glory to God. We didn't mess around and told the dog on bend down and put it on our little clothes or something. The whole reverend out there. Glory to God. <laughs> I said, what in the world? Who was with me? Who was with me? You was with me? I still got my bandana. Glory to God. Amen. Out there, we just thinking we going out there to shake hands and talk to people and Black Lives Matter. And the next thing you know, they start pulling out assault rifles and they start, you know, uh, cars start pulling up from all around and the police start coming. The police would see us and go past us. They got scared. The police were scared of what we, I said, what in the world am I out here doing? I don't know what I'm a part of. I don't know what I got initiated into. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to work no gun. And I don't want no gun to work on me. <laughs> That's when we figured out we were the gangster disciples. The doggone gangster disciples. I said, Lord Jesus, I don't know what's going to happen to me. Peter was the gangster disciple. He was the, that's why Peter has so much authority. Because remember now, when Jesus told Peter that I got to go to the cross, Jesus, Peter got an attitude. Okay, I'll deal with that later. The attitude that Peter got in the Garden of Gethsemane is when they tried to take their Savior away from the disciple. And Jesus effectively offended, defended Jesus. But what did Jesus do? Jesus healed his hater. Because Jesus said, look, Peter, I know you don't want it to happen like this, but I can't let nothing keep me from going to the cross. Oh, y'all not saying nothing to me. Why you keep letting people keep you from reaching your goals? Why? Why? You don't know, glory to God, how to fall and get back up? Some of y'all fall and lay down and start asking for friendship rings and something that you should have never even been bound to. Get up. You got to get that Todd Stribbett song. Got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. You got to get to the point, glory to God, where you can't waste no more time on foolishness. You got to get to the point where you are so laser focused. If it ain't, if it's not, if it's not working on your future, if it's not stimulating your wholesome mind, if it's not healthy, if it's not wholesome, if it's not pure, I know it may seem positive, but if it's not pure, it can't have no parts of me. That's a prayer. Somebody say, if it ain't pure, I want it out of me. Peter said, I come to stimulate your wholesome thing. 